Presion is built on the short stature corn hybrid. So, you know, our traditional hybrids are generally, you know, nine to 11 feet, sometimes taller, depending on management practices and hybrids. Um, and these short stature corn varieties are more in that five to seven range. One of the benefits of these short stature hybrids is you have the opportunity to push population quite a bit. Shorter stocks, everything can get a little bit closer together and we're still seeing equal performance to those traditional hybrids. You know, I'm just gonna be blunt, it's gonna change corn production for the future. Welcome to a special episode of Around the Farm here in Tucson, Arizona. I'm your host, Tom Bursman. And with me today is Erica Strickmatter. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. You bet, Erica. It's great to have you today. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and tell everyone viewing what you do for Bear and why we're even here in Tucson, Arizona? Of course, I would love to. So my name is Erica Strickmatter. I am the Corn Treats Launch and Marketing Lead. It's a pretty straightforward title. I, I launch products out of the pipeline, and then I work with our marketing teams to help bring those to life in terms of creative campaigns, marketing execution. So I work really closely um, with our launch lead, Denise Bouberet, on the Pression Smart Corn System. And we are in Arizona today doing a first-of-a-kind event for our groundbreakers who participated in the Pression Smart Corn System trials this year. So this year was the very first year that customers actually had commercial access to Bayer short stature corn hybrids via the Pression Smart Corn System. They did a lot of work for us this year, Tom. A lot of surveys, a lot of test and learn, getting in climate field view, figuring out how to kind of make those in-season applications and really track the system's approach to this crop. And we wanted to reward them for yep. all that time and dedication. So we planned this event where we brought them down to Tucson, Arizona, um, so they could meet their other groundbreakers and they could tour one of our greenhouse facilities we have located down here as well. See how, you know, the sauce is made, so to speak. The products they planted this year came through that greenhouse years ago. Um, and so we're just here to celebrate them, their hard work, give them a little peek behind the curtain and how Bayer develops their products from a breeding perspective. And, you know, just give them a little bit of some information on Pression and, and what they can expect going forward with this system. You bet. So I got, I got Pression, I think so this is on my shirt here today. And just give, give us a little bit of background. If, if for someone, for some reason, hasn't heard of Pression, what should they be excited about? Why should they be thinking about it in the future? And just a little bit of that, that pitch on what Pression is. Of course, of course. So the Pression smart corn system is... You know, I'm just going to be blunt. It's going to change corn production for the future. Um, the, the reason being, so Pression is built on these short stature corn hybrids. So, you know, our traditional hybrids are generally, you know, 9 to 11 feet, sometimes taller, depending on management practices and hybrids. Um, and these short stature corn varieties are more in that 5 to 7 range. And the reason this is so exciting is Bayer is bringing forward these short stature corn hybrids in a system, in a first of its kind system. So in order to access Pression, you have to have climate field view and you have to be digitally enabled. And we require that because we are utilizing our data and feedback loops that we've not only created within our breeding and R&D organizations, but now with these groundbreakers to create custom scripts for planting um, for these growers to use as, as they're using this product. So one of the benefits of these short stature hybrids is you have the opportunity to push population quite a bit. Um, shorter stocks, everything can get a little bit closer together, and we're still seeing equal performance to those traditional hybrids. So for us, um, you know, having that climate tool along with that really helps customers think through those density recommendations as they're planting higher than they have probably with other traditional pieces as well. So I talked a little bit about climate field view. Obviously, that's a really important piece of that system. But the third arm of that is, is also that tailored agronomic support as well. Um, and that comes from their Bayer reps, um, from their climate reps, their CEM managers, to their FSRs, to their TAs. It takes a team to really bring this system to market. And we want that grower to feel not only supported by our digital tools and technologies, mm -hmm. but also by our, our boots on the ground. So when you think of Pression, we like to use this acronym called PAY. Um, and it talks about protection, access, and yield potential. Protection being those shorter stature hybrids, they withstand wind events and mother nature a little bit better. They're not impervious to mother nature. If a tornado comes through, it's probably going over. But 
when the, we see those derechos or those strong wind events, these shorter stocks are really standing up to that. Yep. Access yeah. is the second piece in season access. You know, instead of farmers needing to rely on aerial applications or driving blind through their field to make a fungicide or nitrogen pass, that shorter stock allows them to go through the field throughout the season and really see what they're doing, giving them more access to precise and timely applications of nutrients, fungicides, nitrogen, et cetera. And then the Y is standing for yield. So because of that pushing of that planting population and density, we think that in time, farmers will be able to kind of find their own concoction or whatever that specific density works for them to really take yield to the next level. And, you know, that access with more fine-tuned applications of, of inputs throughout the year will also help push those numbers as well. So, Erica, yesterday in the meeting with our groundbreakers, we talked about some of the dry conditions and how Presion was performing in those conditions. Could you shed a little light there and maybe walk through how the a little bit of the drought in some areas and still somewhat of a drought in the Corn Belt overall, how that impacted Presion this year? Yeah, so... Mother Nature certainly didn't cooperate for our first commercial year with Presion in the field. She really threw everything she could at our growers. Um, we escaped with not as many wind events, but like you referenced, drought was a problem for growers across the entire geography in the Corn Belt, and especially in the areas where we had Presion, which were up in those northern areas of Nebraska, Iowa, and northern Illinois. Um, what we did find, though, was that Presion still held its own. Okay. So, you know, we we saw that those short stature corn hybrids really could address and withstand that that drought and, the, and those pressures. You know, we would have loved to see a few more timely rains. It would have pushed performance quite a bit. But I think, you know, one thing we really got yesterday during that data presentation was a no filter look at the data and, and just a straightforward, honest look at, hey, here's what we think is working and here's where we see improvements. And, you know, I think bottom line, what we kind of walked away from was short stature corn has come a long way in the last decade. We're looking at yield parity right now um, where these hybrids are performing on par with, you know, what hybrids are averaging in the county that these growers are growing in. So what we want to be as Bayer is the leader on that. We want to mm -hmm. be ahead of that average. But, you know, I think they showed a slide and, and yields were down in, you know, 180s, 190s, below 200 when they first started this a decade ago. And our average, you know, across the Corn Belt this year was above 225, um, right around there. So maybe a couple below and, and a little bit, some a little bit higher. But you know, we saw great performance, and even in areas of drought, we held a yield contest this year. We had over 70 entries into the yield contest, and 20% of those entries were over 300 bushel. It's awesome. So when that system is managed, even in challenging conditions, there is performance. So, you know, when I walked away from that data presentation, I felt like, you know, there's a lot we can do to improve and continue to get better. But dang, there's a lot to be really excited about, even after a tough year. Yep, you bet. And hey, one of the things you mentioned, and I and I heard for the first time yesterday, uh, ten years, a decade. You you said there. I mean, I having short stature corn in our pipeline and exploring it for the past ten years. I don't know if everyone knew that we were looking at that, right? And I mean, you hear about it from from time to time, but it's exciting. I mean, the the work, the effort has really gone into the platform, and it's really exciting to see where Presion's going to go in the next 10 years and beyond. So that said, you did talk a little bit about our yield contest. And, you know, maybe let's shed a little light. You kind of mentioned some yields, but we have some winners here with us that we're excited to celebrate with our groundbreakers as well. Um, anything else you'd want to add on what these guys and gals did and how they participated and the excitement, again, around Presion and the yields they saw? Yeah, so this year we hosted our our very first uh, yield contest internally for these groundbreakers. And so all they really had to do was plant their fields, manage their fields throughout the year. We tried to make it real easy for them to join in on the fun. And at the end of the season, they had to pick a 10 acre square within their climate field view for us, um, pull out that performance, you know, check for moisture, do all the things, take a screenshot and send that to us with some information. Very straightforward. And like I said, we had over 70 of our groundbreakers enter the contest and had a lot of groundbreakers who didn't enter but said, man, if I get a better rain next year or I don't get something knocked over, I'm in and I'm, awesome. and I'm about it. So we wanted to celebrate them. Um, and we gave them a little shout out last night, but in our programming later this weekend, we're going to have a full contest for them 
and uh, just celebrate them for their hard work and efforts. So Erica, another reason we're here in Tucson, I mean, Presteon's extremely important and super grateful and big shout out to our groundbreakers here and that have participated in Presteon. But we have Marat and we're doing the biggest tour that they've ever hosted yet to date. Um, and I know even throughout the recording of this episode, you've been texting away and making sure we have all our ducks in a row and you've been doing a heck of a job at it. But shed some light on what the Marana Greenhouse is and maybe a little bit on, you know, the excitement for bringing these guys and gals in our Groundbreakers group here to visit that greenhouse. Of course. You know, it's always exciting when we can bring farmers out of the cold tundra of the north to somewhere warm for these events. But we didn't just come here because of the temperature. We did come here for the Marana Greenhouse. So the Marana Greenhouse is, I believe, one of Bayer's newest greenhouse facilities. It is seven acres under glass in the desert, um, intentionally for a variety of reasons. Um, they get better daylight down here, more plants to cycle through. Um, and, and really for them, just the drier climate helps with, you know, kind of moisture release and, and conserving, you know, the water that we use to water those plants is within that greenhouse facility. So, you know, I'm going to butcher all of the really awesome things that make Marana Marana, but bottom line, seven acres of corn under a greenhouse growing in ideal conditions because what this greenhouse does is really speed up our precision breeding process. They plant almost 8,000 plants of corn every week. It's unreal, isn't it? So much corn goes through that greenhouse. And what they are doing is creating an ideal environment for us to understand how we can, instead of finding the needle in the haystack when it comes to breeding now, we're making that ideal needle for the haystack. So it's Bayer really just using this facility to speed up our approach to market, getting technology in the hands of farmers even faster and doing so in a way that allows us to shape technology for the future instead of allowing you know the future to kind of tell us what technology That's we right. should be bringing. And so one of the reasons we wanted to bring our growers down here is, you know, a lot of the work in the breeding advancements with Presion specifically have been done at that greenhouse. And they're still being done at that greenhouse as we build out that portfolio of hybrids and products. So we took our growers down there. I think we're filtering about 300, almost 400 folks through that facility today. Um, huge shout out to that crew down there for accommodating us, working with our teams to create a system to get folks through. The tour is about an hour and a half long. So lots of really awesome things to look at and discuss. And they're getting an awesome behind the scenes look at, hey, that seed that you get in your bag next year, mm -hmm. it started here. And it started with science here at this greenhouse. And now that's why you have this seed in the bag. So really highly recommend if anyone ever gets the opportunity, get down to Marana. See what Bayer is doing down here. It is absolutely mind blowing, and and I believe you go on the tour later today. I get to so. go on later today, so I'm gonna go check it out. I'm pretty pumped. Uh, don't want to say that was the main reason I came. There's tons <laughs> of other exciting things to do, but I am very excited to see the greenhouse. Yes, it's gonna be pretty neat. Yeah, it's a really awesome opportunity. We we're excited. We were able to partner with them to bring the growers absolutely and show them. Absolutely. You know, I put you on the spot a little bit here. One thing you mentioned is you know putting putting the seed in the bag and talking about Marana, but hey, when are we going to, where are we going to see Presion in a channel or decal bag? So that's a bit of a nebulous question. Okay. We're, we're not sure yet. For now, they're coming in Presion bags for the next few years. We're hoping when the biotech trait comes out in 2025, 2026, pending regulatory approvals, of course. Obviously. Um, hoping around that time frame, we'll be ready to start kind of breaking out that into a channel or seed bag. So for now, growers, you're getting it in a pressing on bag. It's a good looking um, bag. It's a good looking bag. There's a cool QR code on there. If you get a bag, scan that QR code, check out what we have on there. Um, but in the next few years, it'll come in your familiar decalb or channel colors. That's great. That's great. Erica, what else? What else? we got a uh, like we we talked this whole time I, about this awesome weekend with these yeah. farmers and talking about Presion, talking about Marana. What else do you want to add for our viewers and any yeah. plugs for what you're thinking and what you're working on? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say a couple things, you know, to close us out. And and first and foremost, 
you know, thank you to our groundbreakers. Uh, you know, this was this was a tough group to get into. We had to turn people away. We didn't want to, but with volume, we could only have so many people in. So we've really got the best of the best in agriculture right now, testing these products. And Bayer has truly created a feedback loop for us to take that information from these farmers and and optimize the system to make it a system for the farmer's benefit. Bayer is not coming to the market with a product that we think is right for farmers. We are working with these farmers directly to create a product from their expertise as farmers that is right for farmers. And so we just cannot thank our groundbreakers enough for being on this test and learn journey with us because, you know, we are kind of going through things together and sometimes we're a little in the mud together trying to figure out where we go from here. And so we're just so appreciative of, you know, those growers who are partnering with us on this journey. Um, and then I think I would close with just, you know, keep an eye out on Presion and, and, and what's happening in the fields as we plant again this year. We'll have more acres out this year, um, hoping to get another 10,000 acres in the ground from about 30,000 to 40,000 this next year. And, and we're just so excited to continue to watch this technology mature, um, you know, and, and come to the market and, and bring this first of its kind systems approach, you know, to these farmers to, to really pair hybrids with field view, with that tailored support from those Bayer experts to really change the way we produce corn going forward. I mean, everything that's going into this is just super exciting from the people involved, the digital component, the pipeline and technology. It's, it's an incredible, incredible tool and really excited, like we said earlier, to see where it goes in the next 10 years. Yes. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah. Thank you for joining. And hey, this has been Around the Farm uh, on this Improv 2 episode. So really excited for you uh, all joining us today. If you like this episode, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And again, we'll see you Around the Farm.